Thank you. <laughs> I just thought about something. Another another thing that's humbling. When we started for hand class, we used to go for hand class, right? Shit, father. But we were sitting with kids, y'all. I can talk about kids, seven year olds. So when we walk over to the circle of kids, they jump up like, look how move the shit. <laughs> Young boys scattering out the legs and coming. I'm like, yo, <laughs> they run like a chick. I'm like, staring at you. So you the teacher. You know what I'm saying? So he like, sit down. So you read. You looking at what the kids read. You seven, eight year olds. They like, buckle up. So buckle up. So you sat. Hey. I'm more like, like seven. I'm all the way like 27. They. You know what I'm saying? But it, 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 it humbles you. It humbles you. Yes. And then you see that you listening. This is how you know. Once you're in that environment, you listen like, I'm sure I am going to read. My reading ain't like that. My reading is not that. It's not for that. I got to do better on my reading because that don't sound like mine. You know what I'm saying? Like you go through that a lot. The more you go through that, the more you see how much more you need to learn. That's thought about that. Yeah, that's how it you know, I was I was we were just talking um, when we were uh, we were very competitive as students. You know, I guess being from America, we're competitive, and then competitive, right? So I remember it was one night um, we all used to live in the same neighborhood. Myself, Saeed, and uh, Jamil Fence. But Jamil Fence was like my neighbor. Like I opened my door, his door was right here to his house, and so. One night we were up studying late. Like I really, I was I was up studying late, um, and I was thirsty. And the, the, the corner store, so at the bottom of the building, there was like a store you could walk to. Um, it might have been like one o'clock in the morning, and I said, "All right, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna grab something to drink and take it down." So I left the building. I went to the store and I looked up. And I saw Jamil Finch. He has his library was right there. His light was still on. I was like. Dang, I gotta go back and study because I can't go to bed if I know he's up studying. And that's just what it was. So I went back, went back in my library, turned the light on and started studying some more so I fell asleep. And that was kind of like how we used to move. Good competition. It's a competition. And that's why it's difficult. So we see we see a lot of that sort of stuff and all that nonsense. Honestly, you can't be serious. We won't come from that. And everybody knows that. We was all there at the same time. How is it possible to say this now on Twitter when we can just really get to it with the books and stuff? But sometimes, you know, you gotta build it. I mean, if it, get, if, it get, if it get bad enough, then we'll build it, but we don't like to build that stuff. I think it's a waste of time. I'm sorry, you get to that because it's a lot. That's one, one year, yeah. one year. Yeah. It says, what books should one study to prepare themselves for becoming a Whatever 
One of this, top of the court end. You think they just uh, they read a couple of Jews every day? I was talking to a brother in the class. I was talking to a brother in my class. He used to sound like, what's the name? Um, he used to sound like, what's the name? Back in the future. Doc, yeah. Great yeah. Scott. He used to talk like that. Hassan was in my class. So Hassan was Howard, right? That's my man. So I said, um, I said, used to, I would ask him about, you know, remember his brand and stuff like that. So he said, right now, bro, I'm weak. Right now, bro, I'm like, super weak right now. I'm only doing it just a day. I'm like, hey. I'm like, yo, but real quick, just imagine you look at yourself and then you look at these people saying he's weak because he's only doing one chapter, one juice of the Quran a day. But just a day is how much in a month? I mean, he's the Quran every month. He's finished the Quran every month. He said, that's weak, though. As a hopper, he says, a hopper, man, I'm not really on my game. Right now, I'm going to do it just a day. Which yeah. is if you finish the party out once a month, like that. But then you look at yourself, though. You look at yourself, you hear that, I said, oh, way off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, I'm way off. I remember, I remember one time, I bought a book on, it was a book about innovators. Like, how to recognize it. It was a nice book, right? So, I was, I was, Leaving one class, walking to another one. I was in a college. I was leaving one class, walking to another class. So one of the students, um, he saw the book. He was like, "This only book you wrote us?" At the time, I was, I was like, "Yeah, this is what it is." <laughs> so he started laughing at me. I'm like, "What you laughing at, man?" He's like, "Man, that's just the beginner one. You, you need to be this one, and then this one, and then that one, and then I just start feeling smaller, smaller." Small, and then, like I said, when you get to that point, you realize you don't really know what you think you know. The thing with us, we don't know a lot, we know a little bit, but we also, what we do know is that when other people talk, we know that they don't know either. You understand? You understand? No, let's clear, I know, let's clear I know, that. I know I don't know, but I'm 100% sure you don't know either. You might be worse than me. You understand what I'm saying? So, from that standpoint, we can see that. Huh? I'm sorry, I got about three questions. Go ahead, Shay. My first question is, when y'all would have been studying which, which scholar, not to, not to take nothing from the literature, but which scholar do you feel that you benefited from, benefited from the most? Which one did you feel that you benefited from the most? Me personally, hands down, hands down, me personally, hands down. Shake a little bit of there, me personally. That's just me. I'm not trying to say we, how many that we, we were able to benefit from a lot of people, a lot of scholars. But that's just me personally. I think for me, I think for me it was different stages, right? So from the stage of, from the beginning all the way to the end, the longest run was with Shake a little bit of Jesus he was with us from the Arabic program all the way up until we graduated. And we was never, we never didn't have them to be able to rely on one independent. But I think towards the end of my studies, um, there was a Sheikh Sheikh Nizar, a Shuraib. He took to me, I feel like he took me to a different level. Um, <clears throat> before I before I graduated, um, I used to, he, he's a judge, and that he's a judge. Um, and he used to allow us to go to the courtroom and sit on the panels with the judges when they gave rulings in different cases. And so when we would sit on the panels, um, they would give verdicts on people, and then they would have us look up the speech of Sheikh Islam, what ruling was used, what principle. So we actually had 
practical implementation of the stuff in the Sharia right in front of us. So I got a lot of benefit from the practical implementation of things, right? Then, um, before, before I left, um, he wanted me to focus on um, a Kawada Ibn Rajab. <clears throat> uh, it's a book from Ibn Rajab, Alhamdulillah, and it has nothing but Kawai principles, right? And then he also had me go through um, the second Mujalla of Al Kafi, the second volume of Al Kafi. And he told me, he said, Listen, before you leave, we need to travel from Mecca to Medina and stay the weekend. So, all right, Sheikh. So, I left with him for the weekend, and we actually covered how to do um, analytical deduction class. And we, he, he taught me that the whole trip. We literally read from driving out of Mecca, and he had, a, he had a, uh, the expedition, right? This so was weird because he laid down a third row of his seat. There was another judge driving, and he made a blanket in the back of his Jeep. So I was sitting in the back, you know, I'm bouncing all around on the road. And he's laying down, and we're going through a cafe. And we literally read the entire time. And I told myself, I'm not going to give up if he don't give up. You know what I'm saying? To me, it was like a challenge, right? So we read from leaving Mecca all the way until we got to the hotel. And we were it was like five, six hours. We got in the hotel. I wasn't putting my book down, so he put his book down. And so we're in the same room. He's like, all right, we're going to sleep. I was like, all right, cool. And then when that happened, so I'm saying I got a lot more benefit with him after I reached a certain level. That's a, I'm just, I'm sorry. That's, that's a, that's like a judge inside of a real court. Yeah, that's a real, it's like the Supreme Court judge. He's a real judge. He's not in the court. Like he can sentence people to death yeah. and all that. It's like a real judge. It's personal time. Traveling. Like, you know, sometimes, I'm not saying this because people say it. If I come here sometimes, I'll just people looking at me, okay? Like, I'm out of uniform. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, that on that trip. Like, it gets to that point with the machete. Like, that's how comfortable you still talk in conversation. And it, that's not, it's a much of love. Yeah. And so, what happened was, so for me, I learned a lot of implementation from him and from um Sheikh Abdullah Kadab. Matter of fact, matter of fact, towards the end of my studies at Umu Quarter, it was so nice because I got invited to the sittings of all the judges used to sit with this one judge. And there would be like five or six judges in there and me a small measly student from America and it was a Russian student there. And we would say to go over classical text Half of the mind I'm about to graduate, so I'm supposed to be up in my game. They're going through aspects of paying the cop that I couldn't even understand. Then when it was over, I had to go home and reread everything we covered. It's like man, I don't even know if I'm going to the next class. But I, I kept at it, and it we so what I'm saying is studying with him to me, it was a lot more beneficial towards the end. Shane Blumajid has submitting built us up to a certain point. And I guess he still treated like he like like we were his kids because he wasn't really he gave us a lot of time. Yeah, he gave us a lot of time. Lot he of babied time. us for all 10 years. Way, all the way out the door. All the way until he left. And that's why that's why it's a manner for us, right? The scholars we study, even shaking I didn't get a lot of time shaking up. And that's another thing I need to probably say something. they say the Sahaba, some of them will be working and they will come back. And we used to it used to be like I couldn't even go. I gotta work. I missed all. I missed a bunch of stuff because I had to work. Then I'm somewhere. He mentioned a bunch of stuff because he had to work. And that's just how it's life. It's life don't stop. So it's a lot of even Sheikh Muhammad Al Qadri. He took us oh, to. Man. He put us on another. So like I think I'm it's better how you said it. <laughs> At different stages, you 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 start benefiting from other scholars a little more than the other. At that stage in the public, you know what I'm saying. Sheikh Muhammad put us on a whole nother, he was pushing us. So, yeah, so, so Sheikh Muhammad Hardy, he took us from, he was the first one that allowed us to go back and forth with him. Like, we could, like, you know, we could. No, but only a certain extent. We wasn't, really, we wasn't strong enough yeah, to go back and forth. So, Sheikh Abdul Majid, a Sudan, we wasn't strong enough to go back and forth. But by the time we got to Sheikh Muhammad, we're talking about just a personal class. 
by the time we got to Sheikh Muhammad Hardy, we were able to go back and forth and pick his brain on issues and why you say that, what's the deliver for that, what's the budget stick file for that. And so we can do all of that with him. So by the time towards the end of our studies, we had a lot more tools at our at our disposal where we could, you know, ask better questions and stuff like that. Honestly, yo, we only got to that point by leaving off all the nonsense yes. that's going on in the city. As long as he was involved with the stuff that's going on in the city now, don't go there this way. As long as he was involved with that, he wasn't really benefiting like we could. Once we left that stuff, I'm like, man, that's when we really started like benefiting, benefiting, let me say that. Yeah. That's when it became funner. We come to Masjid one day. We got class. We come in the Masjid. Our shit is reading his Quran to his shit. He getting checked on his Quran. And we got class with him. He's sitting there like, yo, is he reading to the shit? Yeah. Right? It's like, dang. But a Quran shake is different than a Quran shake is a Quran. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Sister got a question. We got those one. Do you recommend studying? At an Azhar University, or is there a position taking Islamic education at either fifth, etc., from a graduate of the school? I just this year. Yeah, why not study at Azhar? What's the problem with Azhar? Or if, about about it, I'm Azhar. Yeah. If, if, if the school does have an issue, everybody's going to know about them. I'm Sunday. Number one, wherever you go, whether it's Egypt, South, wherever you go, where you don't just show up. You just start learning from random people. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody, like, who does, you don't just show up at a place and start learning from here. people. Well, we do here, but that's, we do that's here. the problem. Right? You go somewhere, you check with the people who are there to make sure that everything is what it's supposed to be. You don't just show up at a place and then you just start learning from check random people. Check resumes. Yeah, you gotta check resumes. You have to. That's how I'm one of the oldest, the oldest, 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 oldest in the world. world. How you, what's, don't, I'm just saying. Or a graduate from the school, you got to do your homework, not just on, on everything. What would be the lo the best location, sir, a deal or missile for a female over 40 years old to study? Um, I, would, I mean, to me, if you can go to the map of the lucky place where the Quran was revealed, to me, that's it's nothing better than that. Imagine studying the slam in that place. Well, your salat is worth 100,000 times more than any other place in the world. You can't do that. So, obviously, I want to recommend going to Mecca because I'm biased, right? There's nothing against Egypt or any other place, but if you have the opportunity to go there, you go. If you don't yeah. have the opportunity, what do you go to other places? It's stuck on the side of the That was the case, the whole world would be there. So, a lot of restrictions didn't announce that we Egypt just. Like Egypt has a lot, it's a lot easier to go. While y'all was away, while y'all was there, did you ever have, did you ever meet any of the descendants of the Rasul Assassin? Descendants, like a family member? Yes. It's a bunch of them. It is. They call Ahu Bates. Yes. Said, so the question that he has, he said, did we ever meet anybody from the family of the Prophet so over there? Actually, it's a lot of people that are still in Saudi who are from the, the, the family. They call it Ashraf. Ashraf. But they do have last names that you can recognize them from. Yeah. From the Masjid, and they have others as well. So, it sounds like the study part. Who was some of the hardest stuff that I can deal with over there in Saudi? As a student, so we, the question was, what were some of the hardest things we had to deal with as a student? Are you mean, you mean in terms of study or living conditions? Living conditions? Running out of water. You run out of water. You had to carry buckets back to your house and it was rough. Running out of water. Can you imagine? The water, the, the, what's the name? The water tank be like fire at the bottom. Oh. The water don't goes. take a shower at the door. The water be hot, you know. You go make a stench out with the water hose. Yo. That's what you get, Scream. The water, yeah. You can always tell when the water has somebody in the bathroom, somebody can scream. In the bathroom, you hear somebody in the bathroom scream, you're like, dang, it is. It's like, Lord, because the water tank is on the roof. It's 115, 110 degrees outside. The water, even if you turn the water on cold, the water hot. 
Me go use a stingy old thing to make me make a stingy after use the bathroom. But running out of water was another problem was uh, paying bills when I first got there. <clears throat> so to pay the electric bill or the different bills back then, you had to go to the bank. So you would think that you gain a bank cup, you wind up being there four hours to pay one bill. You remember that? Yeah, they four hours. hours. You got to stop. Great. You got to stop. It was what? Um, some of the other things, it's a lot of little things, you know what I mean? But anytime you had some type of stress, you always remember that anytime you get like really stressed out, it's like, Dad, like, where am I? I like, look where you at. I give you a benefit. That's, to me, it's like unmatched. We used to come from the language program. We got school, right? They get out of the trail. Pray the Lord at the home. You just pull up a double part in the collar. Pull up in the collar at the home. Double part, put your hazards on, jump out, with run in with the kids with the and everybody. Kids. Run into the hall at the cover. Pray the Lord at the cover. Leave back out. Why are you leaving out? It's a janaza. Turn around, pray a janaza. Turn around, pray a janaza on your way out. Jump in your car and go home. Yeah. That was like. Yeah. See stuff like that, you forget about all the other stuff. Yeah, that's true. And you forget about all the other stuff. The reason why I asked that question because I haven't been out of this community. I don't know if it is living conditions, but living conditions and stuff like that. So it's good. That's why I asked. So, in Mecca, in Saudi Arabia, or in like other places? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. So here's the thing, when I left to go stay, I was prepared for the worst. See, when you go study, the Amman, my mind was, whatever, however way it's going to be, we got to get it in. I was determined. It wasn't like, no, I wasn't going, we didn't go into like one foot in and one foot out. We was all in. We sold everything. That's how you know. It's like we sold everything, got one-way tickets. It ain't no coming back. We want, we want to do what we came to do. What's the other going on over here when you were dealing with it? You imagine. That's what I'm saying, Chief. Sell everything. There's no room there. You don't have a home to go back to. You're leaving. That was it. It wasn't no, Dad, let me just hold my house here while I go over here and make No, we sold everything. Got rid of every car. It's everything. It was done. You come back here. You got to stay with somebody. You got to stay at somebody's house. You got to bring your whole family to stay with somebody in the house when you come back here. There is no... That's how it was all in. We was all in. So whatever so, came with it? So whatever happened, we embraced it. It was like, ah, let's come with it. It's part of the territory. You want to get knowledge, it's part of the territory. You got to go through the process. It wasn't easy, and it put a strain on your marriage. For sure. Put a strain That's on your for marriage. Sure. Oh, there's a, a question here. You know, there's a question that says, oh, answer. Is it easy to find? Is it easy to find work for a female? Where? Where? That's the question. They I mean, mean in Saudi Arabia or something? Back then it was teaching English. Yeah. It was back then. Back then it was. As long as you could speak English, you had to die pretty much. Yeah. And then if you had a degree now, it would depend on the level of job. You might be able to teach at a college or a university. Uh, question. Uh, well, I'm over here um, like it's a question. What do you mean? He's a scholar today, tomorrow he's not going to be able to do it. If people literally themselves to the bench, they're so different from Sheikh, you felt the advice on telling people. All right, so the brother said, um, you know, straight, that's the same question that the sister wrote. Why are so many students calling themselves Sheikh? Is it arrogance? Hold that real quick. Um, so the brother said, <clears throat> did the people busy themselves over there with the issues that they busy themselves over here? Like which shape is on, which shape is off it. And then did the scholars give us advice on how to deal with that type of stuff, right? So the only people that busy themselves with that over there were Westerners. Westerners. Like American students, British students, French students, etc. Many of the Arab students from around the world, they busy themselves with knowledge 
And, and it goes back to say, when we first got there, we were busy with knowledge, but we was also connected to a lot of the talk. We didn't really start learning until we cut that stuff off. We cut off the dead weight. Once we cut off the dead weight and kept everything strictly knowledge-based, that's when we started really learning. Until you get to that point, there's a possibility that you can be overseas studying and even graduate and not benefit at all. There are brothers that graduated, and in my opinion, I'm not mentioning their names, but I don't think they benefited at all. And you can tell by, if you listen to some of their talks, if you read their works, it's, it's despicable and disgraceful for student knowledge, in all honesty. And you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but you can read the work and it's like, what? It's a disgrace. You read the works, listen to the things that they say, it's like, this person is, is a disgrace. And the people that you know, here's another thing that we fail to realize. The people, our colleagues that we study with, they're still living. If it's online, they can read it too. If you're writing stuff, they can see that too. Like that's if you if you write something, you put something out that's out of pocket, that's un, that's not befitting of a student academically, people see that. So a person uh, that didn't study a slam wouldn't be able to recognize, but to people that did, it's it's disgraceful some of the things that come up. Why are so many students calling themselves shit is it arrogance? A local island if it's arrogance or not. But who self-designates themselves as a shit? Who from the people in not do that? I mean, we, we already got plenty of books saying how you know a scholar from a person. Who self-designates themselves and gives themselves the title shit? Who does that? When just last year, nobody was a shit. <laughs> now everybody's a shit. I mean, everybody got to wear that. This is the thing, though. We all got to stand before all young people. Period. Whether what you say, what you write down, what you teach people, you're responsible. Everybody's responsible. If a person put that title on themselves, they got to hold up to that. It's that simple. Are they in shape or not? <laughs> no. 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 More than likely, less. Maybe no. they use the linguistic. No. Hmm? Maybe they use the linguistic. Forty enough. Shit. Maybe they use it like that. 50, 50. Might come Some of them might be 50 if they want it. If they well, use it like that, I'll tell you like this. It was early man calling us Sheikhs. Call me Sheikh Saeed. Sheikh Ali. Come back now and put a title on my name. I'm the Sheikh. The Sheikh called me Sheikh. You gotta be, that's part of being responsible as a person. And staying in your lane and knowing what you know and what you know not. What you don't know and being comfortable with that. Here's the thing, like I said, there was a time that if you have a certain relationship with certain scholars, that the scholar might call you sheep. But you know that you didn't study. You know you didn't put the work in. Why would you take on that title and that position when you yourself know you're not even known to have studied anywhere, yet you're a sheep? But then it's people that put work in, and they're, they're shot out. You understand? Like it's just it's just messed up. The whole the whole way is being, you know, taught is just bad. And it leaves people it leaves people lost and confused. And all right, well, they're saying this. So I go down to the family center? No, they're not on it. Why they're not on it? I don't know, but the brother says stay away from it. Yeah, it's cool. People gotta do what was comfortable for them, but at the end of the day, people were the title of shape that they didn't earn. You didn't earn it. Sheikh Tahrir, he earned it, put his work in, 21 years, 21 years he put that work in. 21 years. 21, 21 years. years study, huh? But if you speak the Queen's language and you're from the UK, you wear the title freely. No one questions your status. Where do you study from? 21 years. Listen, where did you study? Where's your resume? What books did you study? What knowledge did you obtain? Where's your resume? But because he doesn't look like us, it's easy to accept. That's a problem. He doesn't look like us. If you look like us, I'm going to shoot you there. If you don't look like us, I'm going to give you the thumbs up. That's the problem. 
21 years. 21 years put work in the urban title. 21 years? I said, like, 21 years? People ain't been Muslim for 20 years. People ain't been praying for five years. Uh -huh. You got something to say. It's just it's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. just got something negative to say. And that was one of the points of doing this whole thing so that hopefully we can see what does it take? What are they over there doing when they disappear for years at a time? They just getting skinny? <laughs> buying clothes and stuff? Like, what are they over there doing? Collecting books? Collecting books? It's like they over there on vacation? No, it's a day and night. It's all day, all night. People lose their family seeking now. Yes. Brothers, listen, families die, whole families have died in car accidents, seeking knowledge. He over there with his whole family. What was the brother? Kids. He's with your guy, Saeed, his name was. Saeed. Somali. He was a, he was a brother. His whole family in the car accident. I think his wife was one person lived, maybe, something like that. In a car accident, he was going back to the And I sat in one classroom when I went there on home. I wasn't studying, and I was just on home I sat in the classroom with Saeed. It was always funny because Got the same name, so it's always just funny. The whole family died on the road going back to Medina. People die over there, and they all kinds of stuff going on. To put go through that for 20 years. Yeah, we like we had, you might die over there and never come back. And then somebody come back and a nobody, meaning not a nobody like nobody not not respect, not respected. But a person who hasn't done anything Islamically as far as knowledge or putting in work to see now come and say something negative about a person who did like that. That's chaotic and crazy. And we wouldn't accept that for no other field of study. So how we let that ride when it comes to this? Resonates. Linguistically, I'm down to three. Linguistically, does it say shake? Linguistically? I think that's what does it say. Honestly, shake, I don't know where that's going. I don't know where that's going. You said you know where it is, man. Green say shake on it. Green say shake on it. Probably do. Good. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't but, but here's the thing. Even when you even did it, even if it did, not to say what you said, sick like the twist. Even if it did, because people graduate. Let's say a person graduated like a Saudi go there. He might graduate at 21. He graduated from the same college he graduated. He's 23 years old. Even if the degree does say shit, he know better. I'm you understand what I'm saying? He's there with the bar and mass. He knows better. He know not to come out of pocket. He know not to jump out of line. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll get checked. The thing is, and that's another thing, in the Saudi culture, there's always somebody sharper than you, so you, they don't get out of line like that. But here, in the land of where we come from, people get out of line and look like, like man, I'm going to get this off. Why I said nothing. I'm going to keep on going. And then the next brother keeps going with you. Every next thing they got a whole community of people thinking one thing that's not the reality. And you have a whole city thinking that you can't pray certain messages, and there's only two some of the messages in a whole city. Like, waste like time. really? Waste of time. Just, just, just a small, just something real small for the, the average Muslim to think about. What is the conditions for a message that could be considered Sunni or Sunni? No one knows the answer to that. This is a very simple question. What are the rules in order for there to be a quote unquote selling feedback? What are the rules? Is there a certain do I have to make before you open the mesh tonight? Is there a certain color carpet the floor? Like, what is it? The bricks got to be painted a certain color? Like, who created what are the rules and regulations? If you find that there's no rules or regulations, you got to raise, you got you to throw the question to something. Like, what's going on here? And only a certain group of people get to control who get to control what message is on Sunday and which one is it? Well, how do you get that pass? If we wanted that pass, what we gotta go to get? You gotta pay for that? Like who can you know I mean like where does that even come from? How did you get to that status? Who crowns you the ruler over whose Islam is authentic versus whose Islam is weak? Where'd you get that crown from? And if I wanted the crown or he wanted the crown, how did we get it? Only you make it, you distribute it. Right, come on, it's absurd. This is the type of stuff, but this only happens in our communities. Pay attention, Muslims. This only happens in our communities. It doesn't happen in other communities. Only ours. People that look like us. 
sister says, how should we prepare our children for Islamic education overseas, college slash university? We gotta be living as Muslims here. But when I, when I applied for the language program to the university, she got to saw it. I applied on Hajj, then I went back for Umrah. So I went to him and I asked him what about my application I could accept it. He said, Man. He said, Well, we already sent the names to I'm all the way over there, so I gotta go back and see what's up. I said, I get accepted. He said, Well, we already sent the names to Riyadh. They pick names and then they send them to Riyadh, and then Riyadh will make a final decision. We send the names to Riyadh. I said, Was well, my name in the batch? I didn't see my name. He said, You see my name? I know you didn't see the names, but you sent them all. It's my name in the batch. Inshallah. I was like, Man, like, yo, I'm all the way over here. You want to talk about the names in the batch? So I said, Well, what am I supposed to do? Like, at this point, mentally, I'm going to Mecca. I'm not buying nothing else for the house. I'm not buying no more furniture. I'm not buying another appliance or rug or nothing. I'm like on the verge of selling everything. You're not gonna tell me if my name is in the head or not? What am I supposed to do? You know what he said? He said, just go back to America and be a good Muslim. That's it. Just like that. That's that's real. And I had to come back and just try to be a good Muslim. I hope I got accepted. You gotta be Muslim. You gotta be. Islam has to be the life. It can't be like we say sometimes. Like we say, well, how do you do such and such? And sometimes you know we say, what you mean, Islamically? Like, what other way are we doing things? Yeah. What's the other way we doing things as Muslims? What other way are we living? If we gotta ask the question, what you mean? Well, well Islamically, you can't do that. Well, which way are you living? How else are we living as Muslims? We supposed everything's supposed to be Islam. Everything we do is supposed to be based on deen. If we gotta ask, well, it's them, you can't really do that. I, well, we shouldn't be doing it because we must know we're supposed to be living by, by the Quran and the Sunnah. You know, I was, um, how about I mean, uh, as I mentioned before, the law of Kira had me. He came down one morning after the Fajr when I was living in Maryland. And I told him I wanted to study. He said, fast, pray all your Sunnah prayers, and do everything you need to do with your worship. And inshallah, you'll get accepted. And this is why I met Abdul Rahman Tawil. You know Abdul Rahman so I'll say them again. Uh, we were, he was actually here, it was, it was after Fajr. And he was like, man, make sure you pray your sooner prayers. Make sure you fast Mondays and Thursdays. He was giving me a whole list of things to do in order to get accepted. And so I said, inshallah, I'm going to try to do these things and it'll all be easy for us to get accepted. Abdul Rahman took me, Tawil took me to the Baha'u from the Dino. I couldn't speak Arabic, I had my application, and he was already there. He took me to the, to the office to apply. You know, we were, we were took, I mean, I just we took, but the brother in the office looked at my application. You know, I didn't speak no Arabic. He looked at my application, he said, took it and said, threw it in the corner. It was a power application, <laughs> stacked up like this, right? <laughs> threw my jaw in the corner, like, Shh. went back once and said, something that I man kept typing. Like we wasn't even standing there no more. It, to him, we was done. I said, man, what he said? He said, he said, you're too old. You're over the age now. I'm like, dang. Just like that, ain't nothing else. <laughs> man, I'm going back. I ain't going to come here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to come here anyway. Look, like, the sister says, uh, uh, are there any programs being taught in Philly or at this center where a child can immerse him or herself in the Arabic Quran? Right now, our program isn't running, but up the street at the Philadelphia Mansion, they have a summer program for Quran. Uh, Brother Rashid, she was here doing uh, Tarawee for a night or two. They have a Quran program for kids up the street at the Philadelphia Mansion. Uh, another question What advice do you give when one is ostracized from taking Islamic education for students who graduated from Islamic University? That's you, what you in Philly, man. You got, especially, uh, you got to stand up and stop being scared. It's the dean, it's ain't the street, it's the dean. Either they can prove what they're saying, it's slamming there, they can't. It's real easy. Either they can prove what they're saying, or they can't. The problem is we won't ask questions. We let people say whatever they want, we won't question them about it. If you start questioning the people, you won't see, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about the majority of the time. And if they don't know what they're talking about, how are they giving you direction on what to do or what not to do? If they don't know themselves. 
The only way you figure that out is you have to ask questions. Where does that come from? What's the idea? Why is that? Why not? Who said that? Like, what is that based on? If you just let people come here and say anything, you want to constantly be at the mercy of whatever they tell you. I think this question, I just want to get the sister's question because y'all make it. I'm on the ground and stuff. This one's what I remember to ask. I was overseas and noticed the messages were not labeled solidly. Where do we label messages? Why do we label messages? And should they be labeled? You gotta ask people who label messages. You have to ask people who put labels on. What's the ruling was it? What's the label of the message? Islamically. What's the ruling on that? What makes it a self and that's the same stuff? What's the what's the how? What's the what's the rules for the message being sold if you're not? Good question. Somebody said a question. What advice would you give someone who doesn't have the drive to seek knowledge? Just be a good Muslim. Listen, everybody is going to have a different pathway to get to paradise. Right? Jannah has many different ways for people to get there. As we find in the narration of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi and Ratsa Baliya, there was a woman that was a prostitute, but she fed a cat water. And that was the reason for her to enter the gender. So the reality of it is we don't know what Allah has for you in terms of your way to get to paradise. Everyone's not going to be a student at home. So let's, let's understand that first. I think at one point in time, historically, uh, the students tried to make everyone in the city a student at home. You got so every Muslim was expected to walk around with Sayyid Bukhari and memorize the Latin to Sula and Kawa Arba, etc. This is not the reality. Living in the land of the Muslims, most of the people in society there are not students, they're regular people. They work nine to fives, they go to the masjid and pray, and they go home. But they, they might sit. But what they do, what they do, they respect the people of knowledge. Right? Yes. They respect the people, the men who are teaching. They respect, they have respect for the man, and they have respect for the shul. Even yeah. though they're regular people, regular jobs, and they're not students of knowledge, they respect the people who are doing that job. And they would they might sit after a slot for a small talk from the imam and go home. And so my advice is you don't have to be a student of knowledge. Just respect knowledge. Respect the slam, respect the knowledge. But you don't have to, it's not a requirement. The only thing that's required is the fundamental things you need to know to be a Muslim. How to pray, how to fast, how to make wulu. If you're making hajj, how to make hajj. These are the things that you need to know if that's what you're doing. The next one, what advice would you give to a sister who really wants to seek God overseas but doesn't have a mahram or just wants to visit? This baby, be, be patient. Be patient. How much money will be sufficient to bring family of three, six? It depends on where you're going and how long you stay. These are not, these are not cookie cutter answers. One one size fit all. It depends on your situation. When I left, I called him. I said, "Yo, how much money I need to bring?" So much you can, much you can. I wasn't expecting that. I think he's gonna say like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I hope he said like four grand. So I'm trying to lowball. He says, "As much as you can." I'm like, I don't really have that much. I don't have that much. Just be like, he said, "As much as you can bring." I thought he was gonna give me a number. He said, "Man, you bring as much as you can bring." I said, Dang. There is no there is no number until you figure out what works for you. Um, any uh, any questions for you guys? Yeah, the answer to the question from the sisters. Yes. Like, how did y'all prepare for back to America? Like, what was the problem? What was that? How did y'all prepare to come back to America? How did y'all prepare to come back to America? Number one, number one, y'all, we didn't think it was coming back. Like, well, this, we thought it was a one way, just learn Arabic, get to sit the scholars and benefit, slam with your family the rest of your life. It's a good old story. So we didn't think we were coming back, but initially. Then, when I started hearing we were coming back, I didn't think it applied to me. <laughs> I'm like, you can't talk about me. I'm like, fully. We got to play it now. Everybody needs to play it. So, who are they talking about going back? I ain't going back. Then the further you get along, you start hearing scholars and talking like, yo, when y'all go back to your country, you're like, why do they want us to go back home? Like, yeah, study. Like, 
Right. The, the expectation is you come here to learn and you go teach you go teach your people. You're supposed to be teaching your people. You're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be if you don't have to. The point of the scholar teaching you is because scholars raise scholars. You know, push that over, is it? Yeah. Right, right, right. Scholars raise, right? Who's sitting who's sitting at the feet of the scholars? Future scholars, the students of knowledge. That's what they that's what they that's the expectation. The expectation, y'all, is not this is not the expectation from the early man. That is no scholars in your country. Your country is full of nobodies who don't have any knowledge. No scholars. And there will forever, forever be nobodies. And it'll, it'll never be scholars. That's not yeah, what they think. Like. They don't think like that. Now. We might be thinking like that, but that's not what they're mad. That's not what they expect. They expect you, student knowledge, whatever your country you're from, you're supposed to take the knowledge that you learn here, go to your country, and disseminate it and apply it in your country. You're supposed to be able to do that as a student. That's your job. Like Shay Blue Jean told us, it's not my job. Like we were asking about the that was in the or something like that. He said, listen, these are conditions of the Nikah. Y'all gotta go back and apply that. Did you know we are? We want to shake. Just say it like this. So if somebody asked me, I can say what well, a shake said. said no, nah, these are the this is what this is the box you have to play with. Y'all go back there and apply it. You know your people better than I do. That's what he told us. He said, I live here in South. The women who wear Nikah from like small ages, I'm talking to a woman who that's not an issue. Y'all going to a different place. Y'all have to take the information that y'all learn and go apply it to your country. That's what's expected. But if a tall gun comes and do that here, people say he wants fame. All right? It's like a negative thing. He must want this. He, how does he get to say that? Well, the scholars that told him, instructed him, that's what he's supposed to be doing, teaching. And he has, like, he's qualified. He might even study, he qualified to speak. If he wasn't qualified to speak, that'd be a different case. If he's qualified to speak, then. What is he supposed to do? Because you understand, he tell you that we didn't go there to be imams. We didn't go to see the being man, like go study the being man. Not go study the man. Not, it's funny because that's why he said that because uh back to the question, the question was, how did you prepare yourself to come back? So me, I, I I didn't plan on coming back. In fact, I never wanted to come back. When I sold everything and got a one-way ticket, that was the plan, the one-way ticket. And as the years went by, I started to realize I can't stay here. And the reality started to set in. So then when I realized I had to come back, I said, well, I'm not, I'm not giving that one. It's not something I really want to do. Um, I wanted to, I used to work in IT. I said, I'm going to just go back to the IT field and just rock out with that. And she car here was the one who told me, well, you don't give a dollar, you're going to be a lay person in two years. A lay person, meaning if you don't go back and teach this land, everything you study all this time, you're going to forget it and be as long as if you didn't study at all. And it scared me. I said, whoa. Oh. It'd be like a waste. And so because of that, I halfway went, but even with that, I still didn't really want to give a dollar because it was enough people that was giving a dollar. And I didn't want to, I remember, I remember, because I was all, I'm always like uh, outspoken. Like I, I say on my that's one of my problems, right? I always say I feel I'm on sugarcoat stuff. So I got a phone call from one of the one of the DUI at that time, right before I graduated, there was something going on and I, I must have said something that take them off. And he called me on the phone and he said to me, <laughs> he called me on the phone missing his name. But if he's listening, he knows, he knows what he said. He calls me on the phone. He says to me, he says, I need. He says, uh, your career is going to be over before you even get started. I'm like, career? What are you talking about? This is a job. I didn't know people made, like, gave dollars for me. I didn't know I'm like, what do you mean career? So I'm, not, I'm not giving no dollar. Like, but at the end of the day, that's what it was. He said, your career is going to be over before you even get started. Basically, you keep opening your mouth. So I said, I don't care about none of that. <laughs> I didn't sign up to, for somebody's career. It, it, it was a lot of little stuff like that, little small stuff like that. Someone threatened your career be over. Like, what does that even mean? Wait, you, you got applications for jobs to get down with? <laughs> like, you like, I do an interview with somebody? Like, what the heck are you talking about? This is the type of stuff that we had the experience coming back to America. I'm, I'm not with that. 
nobody. We didn't have a blueprint. So what you do when you get back? We was stuck. Like it wasn't even real that you going back to America until like the last year. Like you got, you only have like on your transcript in school. You got like these are the classes you got left. You like, oh man, I only got like three classes yeah. left. So what's going to happen after that? Well, I need about to expire too. So now it's like the walls start closing up. So now you just got to figure something out because it's not even mentally, it's not even realistic that I'm going back. We was like, I'm here, right? I ain't. I go back for a couple weeks in the summer and come back. So it just start getting like. But, but here's, here, here's the crazy part. The crazy part is when we got there, we saw Arab kids grow up and get married and stuff. And it's like, like we've seen families get raised in front of our eyes for 10 years. So we done watched the whole generation of kids get older. And then we got to leave and develop relationships, bonds. You got like these people treat you like they're a family, like, like you're a family, and you have to leave. And that's when it really start, started to sink in. Like, dang, this ain't even your home. Yeah. And then when you come back to America, you got family here that I haven't seen you since you was a baby. You don't miss their old life growing up. So that's the that's the trade off, right? Coming back to America, some of the some of the the things that you know you look at is that you have family members that pass away. And you couldn't get back. Um, people got older, uh, kids grew up, like little cousins and whatever, and it's like, damn, you miss a large portion of their lives and you do overseas. So it's a trade-off, right? It's, it's you know, it, it's a trade-off. And this is some of the things that happen. First of all, I knew that was me, but I just got there. That was uh Ali Roach, brother named Ali Roach. When I first got there, he was finished, he was leaving, and I was like, I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't believe he was leaving. I had just got there. Like, I'm looking at him like, leaving? Like, why would he leave? Then somebody said he graduated. And I'm like, graduated from what? I didn't know it was a real college. I didn't know it was a, <laughs> I didn't know it was a real college. Like you get credits and you move up. I thought it was just like, you know, you go there and study and benefit. Somebody said he's graduated, he's finished. I'm like, how do you finish seeking knowledge? You know what I'm saying? So when he left, I'm like, well, that's just him. That, that's not us. It's like almost denial until you look at your transcript, only a couple classes left. Now you gotta really put stuff in the perspective. Like, All right, I really do gotta do something. But there's no blueprint and there's nothing set up. So a lot of people come back and then it take years to get back at the meeting. You go on for so long, it takes a long time. Yes. I know like y'all go around like a lot of style and stuff, but does it still like get you sometimes when you see certain chicks like who does it? Yes. So he said that when he was around certain scholars, did it like, like were you like that? That shake such and such. Yes. I'm gonna tell you one in particular. Shake another good thing and Rahim Allah. He was from the Kibar, from the Kibar, or that from the elder, older, older scholars, right? So some of the students say yes. Shake, but he's dead and he died some years ago. Rahim Allah. They say yes. Shake another good thing and is at the harm. Measure of harm, and he teaches classes there. He has like one of the big shake chairs. So I always heard him. I said, Dang, I want to go meet him. So we ran over, like, you know, try to catch his class. And I'm looking around, and I, I, I see this chair. Now, I saw this old guy sitting in the chair, but the way he was sitting in the chair, it's like he was sitting on his feet, cocked to the side with his kufi off, and his, his shimago falling off his head. And he just looked like his throat didn't look all across. I said, hey, I'm like, where's the shake at? <laughs> oh, like, like, where's the shake at? And they said, that's him. I'm like, what? I'm like, that shake at the other He was like, yeah. That's what I said, dang. Because <laughs> huh? I was just looking for a certain look. In your mind, you got a look. He didn't, have, he didn't fit the description of that look. So at the heart, what happens is scholars, have students reading all their questions off. So it says for the to share, da 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 and then the shake answers questions. He was sitting there reading his own question. This guy is saying this, and he basically, I remember this one thing he said. He said, basically, this guy is wanting me to give him permission to disobey law. And then he looked at the quite the paper and threw it away. Then he read it back here. I had the same exact thing. He was already sitting. This is the thing, it's a big chair, right? So sometimes 
It's the chair for the shit, the teacher. But sometimes regular people, they just yeah. they'll just sit in the chair. Yeah. So sometimes just be regular people just sit. It's this nice soft chair. Sometimes people just sit in the chair and read my hand. So I get down there and I see, brother, it's my elf from Holland. It's my elf. Right now. Yeah. Holland. It's my elf already down there from Holland. So I'm like, hey, this is my first time seeing the shit. So I see, it's my elf. Man. It was in my, it was in language program together. So I'm like, yo. So if somebody sit in the chair, Indian style, she more like, oh. Usually in the shack, they don't really wear their drums like that. They really wear like not the class, not the class. <laughs> so this goes like up on the top. So somebody sitting in the chair, so I'm talking to this one. I'm like, yo, what time you think shake over here? He like, that's him right there. I'm like, in the chair, that's him. He didn't carry it like, not that it was, it wasn't what I was used to seeing. Right? Mr. Humility, though. Yeah. So one time, Brother Zad had. <clears throat> Uh, he would invite a lot of the elder scholars to give talks to the American students. So at this point now, I knew who he was. So one day he was getting on the elevator. And I said, let me just slide on the elevator with the shakes so I can talk to him. Uh, we got on the elevator. He looked at me and said, because he knew I was a student at the, at the university. First, I said, Shake, give me some advice. He said, if you didn't finish the Quran, finish the Quran. That was the only thing he said to me when he got on the elevator. I was you know what I mean? So it's like having those encounters with scholars that are not alive anymore, it, 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 even another scholar, Sheikh Abdullah Akil, Rahimahullah, they used to call him Sheikh al Hanabila. Uh, he was from the oldest scholars of the Hamdali Madhab. He died as well. And when he would come to Mecca, he was from Riyadh. When he would come to Mecca, there would be so many students, there would be hundreds and hundreds. And so, I don't know how I got his phone number. I have no idea how I got his phone number, right? But I would call him from time to time, right? So at this time, I was in the College of Sharia, and I wanted to switch to judicial law, the College of Judicial Law. So I called him. I said, Shit. I said, um, I told him my name, where I'm from, and I wanted to switch to the College of Judicial Law. He said, well, do they have, do they have um, can you be a judge in America? I was like, no. He said, what do you want to switch for? So I said, well, I heard they have like a better usul fit program and all this other. He said, well, then go ahead. Go ahead and switch. I was like, all right. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, just that, he was like, what, how old was he? He was old, maybe like his 80s and 90s. The thing is, just having those encounters with them, as, as old as they are, it meant something to us. Um, just to be able to take bits and pieces of knowledge from them, it's like, we can implement that in our lives, whatever small thing it is, maybe disseminate some of it to the people who see it. Supposed to person, like Sheikh Muhammad Ali Rahimahullah. I never saw any scholar like him. How many that we saw a lot of people, you know? So, uh, I didn't see anybody like Sheikh Muhammad Ali Rahimahullah. I think he was from Ethiopia, Rahimahullah. He died in my small room. If you want to ask him a question, you had to walk with him. Like, he was not, he was just different. He was just different, different, man. He was different. I've never seen no scholar like him at all. Out of all of them that I saw, I sat with and heard from them, benefited from him. He was just different than everybody. Right on up. And when he died, right on up, it was just, that's like scary. But him to die like that was scary to me. Knowing how much information he had and knowing how much, how many people didn't even know who he was. Listen, how much he has, he had, how much, how many people don't even know who he was? I'm scared. This, this is how you know the status of a scholar, right? If other scholars that are alive or in their time refer to their books, remember we're talking about Brother Matt. So if a scholar is referring to a scholar that's living right now, that his book is one of the best books written on that particular thing, that's how you know what we love. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Adam Rahim al Sahara. He wrote an explanation of Sunan and Nisadi. You guys are familiar with Sunan and Nisadi? From the four Kutub Arba, you know, Abu Dawud, what else? Eternity, Ibn Majah, and Nisadi. He wrote an explanation of Nisadi. How many volumes? Maybe over 50 volume explanation of that book. That's his, that's his work. Not someone else's work, that's his work. 
to see somebody do that in your lifetime, like you actually lived and you see when they completed the book, that's amazing. And when you anybody that can write a book that's fifty volumes, what do you think that says about that person? Huh? How many people read anything fifty volumes? Yet alone wrote something that's fifty volumes. On top of that, the, 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 on top of that, you could just go pray with him at any time. Yes. He just, he just prayed the he prayed the that shit right down the street. Don't go around there and pray with Shane Muhammad real quick. Go around there and pray with him. But if you want to ask a question, you gotta walk. You don't waste no time. No time wasted. I remember uh, at all. Shake Shake was still our best and Shake Muhammad and the Adam, they were they were friends. And one of the one of the first big scholars that we had the chance to sit with was Sheikh uh Sheikh Masila Bess. Uh initially he fleed us. He fleed us. And this yes. Uh he was like, no, I'm busy. I said, come back next week. So I looked at the day and the time and I came back next week. All right, Sheikh said we go, oh come back next month. Sorry, I waited. Next month came, I went back. He said, come back. I said, Shake, listen, we're from America. We ain't got we don't got that much time here. You you need to give us something. And we didn't leave his message until he agreed to teach us Kitab Tawhi. And we studied Kitab Tawhi with him. We studied Luch with a fiqh with him. What else did we study? Friday, 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 those are the two books that come to mind right after that. But we fought, like, we really was like, shit, you got to. We don't have no choice. We got to go back to America. We don't have nothing. Long time. Um, well, I guess it isn't different, but, um, you know, sitting. So when we say sitting, let me, when we say sitting, we mean going through books. We don't mean just sitting in general classes. We mean like cover to cover books finish. We did a lot of that with a lot of different styles. We studied and finished books. Um, like I said, whoever's teaching you, you have every right to ask for their resume. What books did you cover? What sciences did you study? That's your right. You're not gonna if you if you are in a university, for example, you got two teachers teaching a subject, you want to know what those teachers are. Rather, if you're sick. You have to see a specialist. You want to know who that specialist is. You want to know their resume. You want to know, all right, you have to get surgery. You want to find out about the surgeon. Is he skilled? Is he not skilled? Like, what, what do people say about him? When it comes to surgery on your heart, which is a slam, how come we don't do the same thing? We don't investigate that. And then we turn around and say that this dean is knowledge. What do you take your knowledge from? But, they, but nobody does that. You use it all the time. Nobody does that. This dean is knowledge. Look where you take your dean from. All that, right? Look, take knowledge. You won't do that. As long as you say these, you were such and such and this like that, we let it, we let it go. Then we wonder why it's chaos. We wonder why it's chaos. And we used to tell the, the scholars that we said, well, person, we would talk to them about what's going on here. Shake, this was going on. And they used to, you know, they used to say, Oops, leave that stuff alone. Man. Yes. No, no, but Shake, uh, leave that stuff alone. Learn. All right. And then come up again, because you know, we get emails. People don't, yeah, you get emails, all that kind of stuff, this is going on, so we go to Shake, da, da, da. say this, leave that stuff alone. Listen, I remember uh, Shake was on, like, all this stuff, they used to talk about, they didn't talk about him that much. I don't know why, he's nice, he's a nice guy. They, I was the one, I thought I was nice, but I was the one that, that took off the bullets. He's huh? nice, man. Eh? No, like, you guys don't know him behind the camera, all the camera is different guy. No. But anyway, I used to catch a lot of it, right? When I was still in school, I would catch a lot of it. And um, I would go to the shake. I said, shake, man, I'm just, I want to refute these people. They, I just want to go in them all up. And he would say, you're going to waste your time. Don't do that. Focus on teaching the people. I'm like, shake, you don't understand. This is a big deal. He says, it's not that deep. Teach the people the Quran and the Sunnah and make sure they understand the deep. That's it. And eventually, whatever the law was good for it, they're going to, they're going to begin to say you have, and then one thing you mentioned, I have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps a person, they don't know what's going on. They don't understand that they're stuck in some type of cult, some type of cultish behavior. They don't understand that. Perhaps when that person dies, Allah will pardon them because they don't understand. He said, but if your job, teach what you know from the Quran and the Sunnah, don't go outside of that. Don't go outside of that. 
teach what you know from the Quran and the Sunnah and do not go outside. And that was usually the response. That was, all the time they said, also, also, down, down. Say, I'm down. Leave them alone. Don't worry Ignorant, ignorant. Just learn, learn. Y'all go back, teach the people the school. Teach the people the basics so they can see the nonsense from Allah. And that's what we were told. To that's why I won't bother with people. In reality, like my question you saw is they used to call him. Now they call him. They call him because he trying to help everybody out. He's trying to help. So they call him as a middleman. So then when they hit the fan, it's his fault. It's the oh, middleman okay. fault for trying to help. So wait, he's talking about when he was overseas. Yeah, so when we were still in school, I didn't have no problems with brothers, but they had problems with Shay Car here, they had problems with Shay B, they had problems with that one. And me, I'm like, all right, well, let's bring the brothers together. I would, when Shay Car here would come to Mecca, I would set up meetings with him, Mr. Richardson, and the rest of the students, where everybody could come together and talk their issues out. Yeah, we did that for years, did we not? Every time. Shadeed, Shadeed, when I made a problem, all right, Shadeed, come over here. All right, guys, let's come together, let's sit down, let's fix these problems. And then they came at me, well, you got to pick the position. You're not making me pick no position. Well, then I got refuted because I didn't pick the position. So now it's like, oh. No, Initially, and in the beginning, in the beginning, it hurt. It hurt. Why did it hurt? Because these are the people that you're with studying and slam. We know right from wrong. We know better. We weren't taught to oppress each other. And it hurt initially because I couldn't believe that the same people that you pray with, memorize books with, sat with scholars with for years would turn on you. But literally turn on you like you like you were just nothing and we were just reading books together last week. And so in, 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 in reality, what it did was it toughened us up and it, it made our skin real thick. So now when we see brothers and sisters down and they come and they say, ah, oh, I'm being ostracized, I'm sorry, it happens to everybody. Just take take the bruise, make your wounds, toughen up, put your trust in Allah, that's it. And that's basically what happens. That's a little side question. Did y'all have a way to book stuff and stuff like y'all was over there? Yeah, I'll be the people of being there. I'm all in. I'm all the way in. I'm all the way in. I'm all the way in. No, I went to the book. I wasn't good at it. That was his twist. He had his white she wanted. His white his white bush on every that was his thing. I really wasn't in that. It was it was it was you live with the Muslim man and you see what it can be. It ain't perfect, but you see what the potential is of an Islamic society. And it puts stuff, it makes it realistic. We be living sometimes in a fantasy world. How does a whole society run? How does a whole Islamic country run if everybody is a student of knowledge? Don't make sense. Like nobody's gonna nobody wants to be a doctor. Nobody's gonna be a doctor. Doctors don't get rewarded. Muslim doctors don't get extra for law. Nobody wants to be like an engineer or just a king, whatever. Everybody out there is doing. The society don't function like that. That's not even realistic. And a lot of times we be living in a fantasy world. We live in a fantasy. And a lot of times it's difficult to make it realistic if you never saw it. So you get to see all of that stuff, you gotta say, okay. This person has a regular job, they worship a the law. One thing about him, he's always at pleasure. Early. I know you're there early because I'm late. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can say what you want about him, but he's at pleasure all year round. Is he a student of knowledge? No. So you're supposed to be there. Like you, Mr. Knowledge Man, you're the first one supposed to be there. You got people who not. Students are not, they regular people worshiping Allah, but they're worshiping and they know what they're doing in their capacity. And you get to see, okay, this is real life. This is not the fantasy world that everybody walking around is going on that level. It's not not that everybody can't, but you do what you want to do. You can do it. But is that for everybody? But everybody want to make that sacrifice? Not realistically, no. And that's not something that we gotta blame each other for. But when none of us want to do it, then it's blameworthy. None of us want to look forward to our children being scholars of Islam. None of us concerned about our children being the father of Quran, the of Quran. None of us, now we got a problem. But we all worried about what? The contract. Sports, we all in. I ain't saying sports time, I'm saying the reality is. We all in on sports. How many of us is all in on our children memorizing the Quran? 
if we not, and if, when, 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 the, when the numbers is low like that, and it's dangerous for us overall, what's going to happen when we all old? Who's going to leave the slot? Who do we think going to leave the slot? We got a bunch of kids, my child, but what are our kids learning? Can our kids recite the Quran? I don't have time. The parents don't have time to teach them, but the parents don't know. We're supposed to do what? Put them in a program where they can, where they can learn. Right? Just like we do for anything else. If I don't play, if I'm not playing football, if I don't play basketball, then I do what? I send them to a camp. I pay for a camp to coach them up. The problem with the parents is that they're too afraid to send their kids to certain places. They can't send them nowhere. They don't want to send them nowhere. And you know, in, in 15, 20 years ago, they couldn't even go to school. Yeah, y'all remember that? Uh, school, I school. The women couldn't go to school. The men could. The men could, but the women couldn't go to school. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, the point of mentioning all this was not to say what we are. To understand, hopefully, it shows that we as a community of people, we have to have respect for Islamic knowledge and scholarship. We have to have respect for Islamic knowledge and scholarship. Hopefully, understanding that. This is what people, not just us in Mecca, there's people in Medina, there's people in Egypt. The talk of them, student knowledge, this is their life, the program, that's what it looks like. And we, we, we wasn't like, no, um, people like we saw real, like, real, God, we got to tighten up. If we think we're doing something, then you come across and be like, huh? We know we way off. And that's what it is. The problem is, from what I observe, we observe, we don't respect knowledge. African American Muslims in this city in Philadelphia, black Muslims, young, a lot, we don't respect knowledge. We respect relationships and what we respect knowledge. So as long as you're cool with this one and that one, you got the utmost respect. Right? And if you're not really cool with them, or you ain't from here, as long as you're cool with it, you got the utmost respect. But if you're not down with them, I can't really, I can't really bang with you right now. Well, that's not a sin. No weird. That's not a sin. So hopefully this information will benefit uh, to open some eyes and see what's really in front of us. So I, so real for real, y'all, the Philly been like this for a long time. We don't know what we have here. We really don't know what's in front of us. We really don't know what we have in front of us, the opportunities that's in front of us. If you go in other communities, y'all, People benefiting from people, right? We got people who study, not even us, 15, 20 years of study, of study. How you don't drive to the mansion to hear him talk and learn from him? How? You got a car, you going down the street. That man traveled, or that one sister traveled across the world to learn what they can really teach you down the street. And we don't even show up. Why? It's online. Not even that, man. We've been taught to hate each other. Well, so I can't, can't take from them. Can't take from them. Allah forgive us. Sure, I'm going to go. You got a question? All right. What do you respect in knowledge? What do you respect in knowledge? What do you Question is, what does it look like to respect knowledge? What does it look like? We say we don't respect knowledge. Well, how does a person respect knowledge? We gotta know when to be quiet when you want. I'm gonna give you an example. That's 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 one thing. Respect and knowledge means if you hear somebody talking about another Muslim, be quiet. Because you know that you don't have the qualifications to speak about another Muslim. That's respect and knowledge. Respect the knowledge is staying in your lane. The person may say, well, what is my lane? If you haven't studied Islam, your lane is a common prey. Give the salams and be a Muslim. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't don't start delving into issues that you're not qualified to speak about. Just be a Muslim. Worship Allah. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Try to make your position with Allah better. That's it. But disrespected knowledge it's when you open up your mouth and you speak about other Muslims and you know that you don't have a problem. We just mentioned some of the qualifications. These people put work in 20 years, 15 years, 30 years. If that's not you, just go back. 
And man, that's almost like that's almost like a person in in in, in pop world football trying to get the NFL. Is that gonna work? No. You get in the lane that you're not qualified for. You're not qualified to speak about other Muslims. Certain students of knowledge, matter of fact, all of the students, you're not qualified. You're not qualified to speak ill of other Muslims. You're not, unless it's something blatantly clear. Something that's my moment and deed the Gorora, something that every Muslim can see. When you open up your mouth and speak about other Muslims, what you're saying is that I'm allowed to do that. The religion of Islam gave me the authority to speak about that Muslim or that Muslim. If you believe you have that authority, now it should be open game, fair game, for someone to say, what's your resume? What's your qualifications? Where did you learn to be able to speak? Well, I learned it from the masjid. Nah. The people at the masjid don't even know. So how do you know? Oh yeah, the people, oh, go ask the people at the masjid. What did they study? What principles did they learn that qualifies them to speak other other Muslims? We still wait. We still wait. How many years now? We're waiting two years. We still don't hear that. What qualification? We've been said brothers aren't qualified to get verdicts. If any brother disagree with that, if you think you're Ahmed to get verdicts, we're still waiting to hear from you. But it's better that they ignore us because that's what's best. That's what's best. The reality of it is, if you're not qualified, don't open your mouth about other Muslims. It's safer. It's safer for you with your relationship with your Lord. It's safer. Just think, you know, the people who are tasked with that, they have a task. They have a responsibility on the young. Before law, they have a responsibility to clarify Islam. Why do you put that on yourself if you didn't, if you didn't even go through the training? Why do you go to somebody's house and take their toilet apart and you never learned about plumbing? Why would you do that? Why would you go to somebody's house and knock their wall down and you don't even know how to do carpentry? You don't even know how to use a drill. You haven't been trained. You haven't been trained, so why would you do that? Why would you put yourself in that position? He says there's only two matches on the Sunday in the whole city. It's two selfie matches. So what does that mean? What, what's Every the other match is the match of innovation? Cool. Now, now, now listen real quick. In Musul, this is something called Mafum Mukhalifa. Right? This is something called Mafum Mukhalifa. Mafum Mukhalifa, it means that if I say, if I say, it's all the brothers here, there's only one real brother in this message. What does that mean about everybody else? No, I real. Right? That's called Mathum Mukhalifa. We left it open so that you can interpret it how you want it to interpret it. There's only one brother here that's thorough. That means everybody else is what? The noodles. Noodles. <laughs> right? There's only, so, but listen, listen. So, when we say there's only two messages in the city that's following the sun, that means every other man said it's not what? So that means what? Right. Innovator? Right. What? And if that is and if that is what you believe, if that's what you believe, then what? You gotta bring some evidence to substantiate your claim. You have to prove it now. See, we don't we don't want to get into the proven state. That's too hard to do. It's easy for me to throw shots, but I can't prove by that. That's hard. Now that requires me to do some real research. And then they realize. There's two, two matches, y'all. So, it used to be four. It's down to two now. It's down to two. It's down to two. If that's the case, right? What does that ultimately mean? What are you saying to people? Don't go nowhere else. Come here with me. Yes. Cool. All the knowledge is with me. That's cool. what that means. That means if, you're, if you want to be responsible for teaching everybody, then you're more than welcome. It's less responsibility for me. <laughs> You can teach everybody. That's if you're comfortable and you know that much, you're that confident that nobody else is practicing this thing correctly except you. How do they learn? You take one responsibility and you stand with law that you don't care. It ain't even no, it's not that deep, there's no argument like that. The reality is we know that people say that and don't know what they're talking about. It's ignorant. And then it leaves the people that come to the ministry confused. And listen, if somebody says, anybody listens to this and says, oh, these brothers don't know what they're talking about. 
Where's your resume? Produce it. Produce your credentials. Produce your trainings. Produce. We let you have you produce. It's not. No, no, no. We used to, all we do is sit down, open books, and get to the bottom. It ain't rocket science. It's not that difficult unless you don't want to fix the problem. You don't want to fix it, and that's the If you really want to fix it, the doors is open all over the city. Everybody got everybody's phone number. Everybody know everybody prays that. Nobody's ducking and hiding. Nobody got is not out of control. We can sit down, pull books out, and just get to the bottom of it. If you really want to fix it. But if not, you like chaos to keep doing what you're doing. You keep people confused. A lot Resonates. of names. Resonates. Got it, though. Sound perfect. Hold on. Any other questions before we end up? Hopefully, this one. Oh, it's set. It's just one. No, it's just one. No, it's just one. I will start with that, inshallah. Subhanakallah, who are the candidate? Inshallah, that is the stuff that I want to do. Salaam alaikum, Rahim, Salaam alaikum. Great, then do something that talk. Yeah, that's right. The summer, a conversation I had yesterday. Watch that in the in the 